Hi, my name is Chris Melnick and I'm a realtor in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Today, I'm going to talk about whether or not you really need a realtor to sell your home. To begin, I'll start by saying this video is not going to be just a one-sided pitch to try and convince everybody that no matter what, they must have a realtor when selling their home. In fact, for some people, it may be best if they don't. This all comes down to how highly they value the service. For example, if you're selling a home to a family member or close friend and are happy with the price you've agreed on, you can just have the lawyers draw up an agreement and handle the transfer with no real estate agents or real estate agent fees involved. In that case, a realtor's value likely wouldn't meet or exceed the cost. The cost to have a realtor sell your home is high. I won't say it isn't. What you'll often see in the market is 5% plus HST, which on $500,000 is $28,750. Now, that's a lot of money. You can buy a car for that. Many people will say that they care about the price of something the most, but what they really mean is value. Everything in life is a value proposition, and if the value you get from something exceeds the amount you have to pay for it, then you'll make that exchange. So I'd like to give you my opinion on the value proposition so you can better understand it and make the judgment of the value proposition for yourself. As an aside, if you've seen my About Me video, you'd know I'm a very DIY type of person. I like to do things myself and I'm a big fan of saving money. I was also first a licensed realtor in 2015 in Vancouver, but when I sold my home in Ontario, I wasn't licensed in that province and I paid a realtor 5% plus tax to sell my home because the value proposition made sense to me even knowing what I knew. You can take that as me practicing what I preach. But back to the value proposition. Here's the first thing to remember. That 5% is split between the listing agent and the buyer's agent. Each gets 2.5%. The buyer's portion is known as the cooperating commission. The buyer's agent is going to have an agreement signed with the buyer that says they'll get paid if the buyer buys a home. If there was no cooperating commission, those buyers would have to pay the agent out of pocket, which many people can't do. So if you don't offer cooperating commission, many buyers financially wouldn't be able to buy your home. And since the vast majority of buyers work with realtors, you eliminate a lot of prospective buyers by not offering cooperating commissions. This is why for sale by owner homes that don't offer cooperating commissions can sit for long periods of time. Now for the value of the listing agent or the other two and a half percent. This can be split up into streamlining the process, reducing the risks and creating as much competition as possible. Our realtor has done this process many times before, so we know the ins and outs and how everything works. Be it paperwork, the actual procedure in selling a home as mentioned in my home selling video, uh, how the dynamics work with different professionals involved and just how to make the process as smooth as possible. I also pay for the photography, the 3D scanning for the virtual tour, a drone photography, and even the house cleaners. Since I'm familiar with those professionals that I use for the services, we won't have any issues with quality or timing. Our job is to make a complicated process look easy, and many people highly value avoiding that learning curve and the reduced stress. The next part a listing agent can help with is reducing the risk. This comes in many ways. First, when looking at offers, we're able to advise which offers we think have the least risk of falling through. This is done through evaluating conditions, how the offer is written, and the perceived behavior of the buyer's agent and buyers. Sometimes we can just pick up on nuances or patterns, which can be indicative of a flaky buyer. And that only comes from experience and being very familiar with how things normally work. In a market with any sort of competition, having momentum is key. What this means is that when a listing is brand new and fresh, that's when there's going to be the most eyes on it and probably the most offers to choose from. But once a winning offer is chosen and you potentially select a backup offer, you reject the rest. Sometimes a winning offer is selected solely on price 
then partway through the conditional period, they have to terminate for something frivolous. If there was no backup offer or that group found another property, the home would then come back to market. But now it has lost that momentum and freshness. This almost sounds like an old wives tale, but it is a very real phenomenon. If a home has been around for a while or comes back to market, people can start to think there's just something wrong with it because oftentimes there is. The majority of the time, the number of offers and the price go down each time a property comes back to market. This is why, like in my home selling video, I say that preparation is key and realtors are very aware of the ways you need to prepare to reduce the risk of a terminated offer. The third key reason to have a good realtor list your home is to create as much competition as possible. Competition is a very interesting thing. The difference between having only one interested buyer and two can be $50,000 more on a $500,000 home. It can be the same home in the same condition with the same buyer. But if there's competition, they can just be willing to pay much more to get the home. To have the best chance for this competition, there are three things that must happen. First, the home must be presented well. People want to know what's being offered. What this means is that you need to provide as much documentation as possible. There are standard fields on a listing and a limited space for a description. But most importantly, there is an option to upload documents to the MLS system that the buyer's realtor can access and pass along to their client. This information can be utility bills, tax bills, invoices for renovations or repairs, the detailed specs of a newer home, and even the plans for a newer home. At the very least, the ages of certain components like the shingles and hot water tank should be known. The more information, the better. A virtual tour is very necessary for both local and out-of-province buyers too. Oftentimes, just the normal pictures of a listing won't include the less pretty rooms, like for storage or the mechanical room, but people still want to see them. People can see value in many different ways, so when selling a property, you want to display that value proposition as well as possible. How does the home stack up to the competitors, and why should someone pay more for your home than the competitors? That is the question you need to answer. The second thing that needs to happen is to take advantage of timing. Since a listing is only fresh and new once, the timing of a listing is key. The timing of a listing is best when the home will show well and people are available to see it. So avoid listing in mid-August to mid-September, December to mid-January, and long weekends. Many people are on vacation at those times and don't want to see homes. Sometimes there is also just odd times when there are uncharacteristically few homes on the market like yours. And only someone who's in touch with the market would know that and that it would be an appropriate time to list. Next, if you're holding offers, it's a bad idea to have your offers due at the same time as a competitor home. If many similar homes come on the market at the same time, the same groups may have been willing to put offers on them all or a few. But if the offers have the same deadline and those buyers have to choose just one to put an offer on, you're potentially splitting the number of offers you'll receive. This would be like splitting the vote. So it's best to push the deadline a day or two if necessary. The goal is to get as many serious offers as possible. And it can be disastrous if people have to choose between their favorites, especially if your home wouldn't be considered the best in class. Only realtors have access to this information of when offers are due. Thirdly, the most direct way to drum up competition is to simply inform groups that there is competition when there is and inform them of the number of offers and give an extension if any groups want to resubmit the offers after finding out about that competition. Generally, when people are offering on a home that no one else is interested in, they want to buy it for as little as possible. Whereas, if there is immense competition, their offer will be the maximum amount of money that they value the property at. This spread can be huge. This is why every effort and possible avenue must be taken to spur competition. Realtors are very good at this. In conclusion, only you can decide how much you value having a realtor sell your home. If you're selling to someone close to you, you probably don't see the value in it. 
But if you want to put your home on the open market to tap into the majority of buyers, it would be a very good idea to be offering the cooperating commission at the very least. So then it becomes the value proposition of whether having the process streamlined, uh, risks removed, and potentially the highest price received through competition is worth about $14,375 on a $500,000 home. Now, since even having two serious buyers can increase the price by the tens of thousands, which would exceed the fees you're paying, the choice can be easy. And you'll never be wondering to yourself if you would have got more money if you had just used a realtor. And that's why I used a realtor to sell my home in Ontario. Like always, I hope you've got some value out of this video. My contact information is in the description. Goodbye.